Hi everybody. Before we get started, I'm going to show you my layout. JavaScript will be written in three files. The index.html file. This will be the main JavaScript file. We'll make our scene, we'll make the reads, we'll make the water, and our animate loop. The ground.js file will make a rocky cliff in the background. And the shaders.js file will make our vertex shader and fragment shader. I have a folder called BG. Everything in the background will be in this folder. I have a cliff folder that holds all the texture images for the cliff. I have a water folder that holds the water texture image and my ground.js file. And the water.js file is the water shader that I got from the 3JS GitHub website. So let's get started by making our shaders with our shaders.js file. The shaders.js file contains my vertex shader and fragment shader. The vertex shader manipulates each vertex. So on my vertex shader, I'm declaring the uniform time. So time will be used to animate the reads. And I'm creating this noise function I got from the book of shaders at this website. Basically, you're getting a random number and separating it into the fraction and the integer parts. The fraction parts will be run through this smooth step function to produce a smooth gradient. So the screen will be divided into cells. I'm going to get a random integer value for the bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top left corner and top right corner. Then I'm going to mix the values in between them with the fraction values to produce a smooth color gradient. So here I'm mixing the bottom left and bottom right values according to the fraction x values. And here I'm mixing the top left and top right with the fraction x values. And here I'm mixing the bottom and top values by the fraction y values. So inside the main function, t will be the animation speed. I'm getting the vertex position and then I'm calculating the amount of smooth noise for this xz position here and I'm adding in the amount of time as a vector. When I call the smooth noise function I need to pass in a 2D vector which this calculates. And then I am calculating the noise strength by restricting it within a certain range of values. In order to get the reads to bend stronger at the tips I'm using this math function here. So it makes it when you're higher on the y-axis, you're going to get a greater amount of bend than you are at the base of the read, or a lower y-value. Then I'm restricting the amount of displacement between a range of values, and then putting that displacement on the negative z-axis. But you could change this. You could put the x-axis here. You could make it positive or negative, and that will determine which way the reads will blow or move. And then I'm just putting in the final position of each vertex here. For the color shader, I'm just setting a base color of green. You see the G value, RGB, is 1. And then I'm going to produce a color gradient based on the Y axis. So the base value will be here. And then we're increasing it as you go up the Y axis. And by playing with these values, you can produce different types of gradients. Because we are multiplying these two color values together to produce the final color of a pixel. And then finally, I'm exporting the vertex shader and fragment shader. That means we can import them into a JavaScript file. So in my index.html file, I have import vertex shader and fragment shader from, I'm importing it from the shaders.js file that it was exported from. All right, let's make our ground. So my ground JavaScript is in the ground.js file, which is in my background folder. The first thing I'm doing is importing 3.module.js from my code editor directory. That way I can use the 3.js commands in this ground.js file. And inside my background folder, I have a cliff folder, which contains texture images for my ground. I have an albedo map, which is also called a color map. I have an ambient occlusion map, a height map, a normal map, and a roughness map. So I'm creating a texture loader to load these images, and I'm creating a variable called s, which is set to 3. This is the number of times the texture will be repeated horizontally and vertically on my ground. Now you may want to change this number depending on what type of texture you have, the size of the texture, and the size of your ground. But all my textures will be using this variable. And I'm just taking each map and loading it, and putting it into an object. Then I'm setting the wrap s and wrap t properties to repeat wrapping. That means the wrap s property can repeat the texture horizontally and the wrap t property can repeat the texture vertically. Then I'm setting the repeat set method to the number of times it can repeat the texture horizontally and vertically. And I'm doing that for all five maps. 
Then I'm creating a new three plane buffer geometry for my ground geometry and I have my width, length, width segments and length segments. Now I have to create a second set of UV coordinates or texture coordinates for the ambient occlusion map. So I'm just creating a new variable and making it equal to the first set of UV coordinate values. And now I'm creating a constant ground and I have the word export in front of it. That means I can export this ground object into another JavaScript file. So it's going to be a new 3 mesh. I'm passing in the ground geometry and I'm creating a new 3 mesh standard material and I'm setting my color map to the map. I'm passing in a color so the color of the color map will be combined with these color values. The normal map will be the norm map. The roughness map will be my rough map up here. The roughness value is set to 1 because it's a rocky cliff surface. I want it to look rough. My displacement map will be my displacement map up here. The displacement scale will be 3 and that's how much the displacement map affects the mesh vertex positions. And my ambient occlusion map is my AO map from up here. And I'm putting that ground at a slant, so it's kind of like a slanted cliff, so I'm rotating it by this amount, and I'm setting its position. Since this ground object can be exported, let's import it into our index.html file. Here I'm importing that ground object from the ground.js file inside the background folder. Let's start working on our 3GS scene. So in my index.html file, I have imported this water shader from the 3GS website and I've placed it inside my background folder along with my ground.js file. So I've just created a scene. I've created a background color that is kind of grayish to make it look foggy. And I've added some fog to the scene using this exponential fog. So that means the fog will grow exponentially from the camera. And I've set the color to the same color as the background so that the fog will fade into the background color. And I've set the near value and the far value. So the near value, anything closer than that is unaffected by fog. And the far value, anything farther than the far value is completely fog color. And anything between the near and far values will fade to the fog color. So you can play with these numbers to get whatever kind of effect you want. I wanted to see the outline of the cliff and some jagged edges of the cliff and some detail of the cliff close up. So that's how I wanted my fog. Okay, then I'm just creating a camera, setting its position and rotation. I'm creating my render. I'm creating an ambient light and a directional light. The directional light has a little bit of yellow color, so the rocks will have like a little yellow tinge to them, and my orbit controls. And then I'm adding the ground that we imported from ground.js. So now we're ready to build our reads. So we're going to make a new three clock to keep track of the time, because remember time is a uniform that we declared in our shader. And we're creating a reads material. It's going to be a new three shader material. So we're going to pass in the vertex shader, the fragment shader, the uniforms, and we're going to draw the material on both sides of the object. So the number of reads is 5,000. And I'm making a constant called read, and it's going to be a new three object 3D. This read object will store the position, rotation, and scale of each instance of a read because we're going to use instanced mesh. Instanced mesh is good for if you want to draw a large number of objects with the same material and geometry, it increases performance rather than just making individual reads with their own geometry and material. So for reads geometry, it'll be a plane geometry with a width of 0.02, a height of 2, and one width segment and four height segments because reads are long and thin. And I'm creating the object reads, which will be a new three instanced mesh I'm passing in the reads geometry, the reads material, and the number of reads. So when you create instance mesh, you have to pass in the geometry, the material, and how many of them you are making. And I'm adding those reads to the scene. And I'm setting the position of the reads to this y value at the level of the water. So now we're going to transform the position, scale, and rotation of each read instance. So I'm looping through the number of reads, I'm setting the X position from minus 25 to 25, the Y position will be 0, and the Z position will be from minus 7.5 to 7.5. You can change these numbers to whatever you want to position them however you would like. I'm scaling them from 0.5 to 1, and I'm rotating them on the Y axis from 0 to 180 degrees. 180 degrees is math.py. Then I'm going to update the matrix 
or the local transformation of a single instance. So we're transforming them at a local scale, not at the world scale yet. To s transform them at the world scale, or to transform them from the object scale to the world scale, we're going to use the reads object and set the matrix at each individual instance to the read matrix. And now each read instance will be transformed at the world scale. So we're ready to go. So now let's add water to our scene. Let's create our water. So my water geometry will be a new three plane geometry, 70 units by 30 units. You can make it any size you want. And my water object will be a new water. So I'm passing in my water geometry and the texture width and texture height. And the water normals will be a new three texture loader that loads the image of the water normals. You could put the website where the image is located, or you could download the image and put it in your code editor directory. And there's a comma after this image because we're going to pass this texture into a function and set the wrap S and wrap T properties to repeat wrapping. So the texture can be repeated horizontally and vertically on the plane. And after that, we're gonna set some properties for the water. So the alpha will be one. I've commented out the sun direction and sun color because they're not in this scene. You can set the water color and you can set the distortion scale. The distortion scale distorts the reflection of an object on the water. So a lower number means less distortion. And then I'm rotating the water minus 90 degrees so that the Y axis is up and down. I'm adding it to the scene and I'm setting its position. And then I'm declaring the water uniforms as the water material uniforms. And I'm going to change the uniforms in the animate function. And in the animate function, we're gonna pass that time variable into the reads material and the water material. So here I'm getting the amount of time that is elapsed on the clock, and I'm making it equal to the reads material uniforms time value. And then I'm setting the uniforms neat update to true for the reads material. And then for the water, I am adding 1 60th of a second to the water material uniforms time value. So this is how we can use time to animate the reads and the water material. And then I just have a resize function to handle window resize events. And there we go.